I want you to imagine this scenario that you were born a slave. Your mother was a slave. Your father was the slave master and your father raped your mother, did not claim you. And that's how you came into the world. That is some crazy, heavy baggage to be walking around carrying on your mental. And this is the story of Alonzo Hernan, a man who was born a slave who became a millionaire. See, I've been doing these videos and I've gotten a lot of pushback about historically these things happen and historically they're true. Historically they did happen. Historically they harmed black folks. But in this history is examples of black excellence, black wealth, black motivation, and black coming up. Black wealth, black money. Alonzo Herndon was born a slave and became a millionaire by starting businesses. You know what his first business was? Three barber shops that served white clients. Where have you heard that game, that playbook talked about before? And then he started the Atlanta Life Insurance Company and this is how he became a millionaire. Same playbook as A.G. Gaston. I want you to understand, I know that racism is an ugly, bad, bad thing. But racism did not stop this man who was born a slave from becoming a millionaire. I want you to think about it. He was born a slave. He was born into bondage. And he went ahead and became enterprising and began owning businesses. He became a millionaire during an era when they were lynching black men when the Klan was running rampant all over the South. Doing these, I mean, let's keep it a buck, because as you guys love to remind me, historically, this went down. Historically, this went down when he was making his millions. This was going on when he was making his millions. So historically, while this was going on, this is how he got down. He said, no, I'm not going to be a regular black person. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be an enterprising, a hustling entrepreneur. I'm going to start some businesses. I'm going to get my money. I'm going to get paid. I mean, I want, I want you to really think about this. If you were born a slave, some of you are mad because your, your parents didn't teach you how to drive. Imagine being born a slave being born on a plantation and having to endure that crap, put that upon your mental. Cause see, one of the things that, you know, we, we consistently talk about, and a lot of y'all come at me, it's like, you talking down to black folks. If me telling your monkey ass the truth is talking down to you, so be it. Cause I'm not gonna censor myself. I'm not going to speak Kindly, I'm not going to kiss your booty to help you, to educate you. That is not required for grown folks. That's required for feminine ass men. That's required for men all up in their feelings. Because here's a story for you. Imagine if you were born a slave, imagine with the knowledge that your father raped your mother and that's how you came into the world. See, with that knowledge, with those facts, Alonzo Herndon had to be mentally a very, very strong person. He had to be. There's no way he could have created these businesses by being a feminine, weak man because of his history, of his upbringing, of his, the way that he came into the world. There's no way. He could have been weak, whining, hoping for someone to give him something for the free 99. He wasn't one of those people. See, he was one of those dominant black men. And yes, his father was white and his mother was black, 
but we've seen that playbook. If you have a black parent, you're black. That's just how it is. So we're gonna say that he was a dominant black man back in the era when black men were shot, lynched, hung, and burned for just speaking their mind. I don't think if there is any harsher environment to be an entrepreneur. A.G. Gaston went through it. Alonzo Harnden went through it. I mean, I want you to think about it. You know, right now, we've got this pandemic thing going on and many, many black folks applied and got the PPP loans, the EDL loans, whatever other loans they have out there. Once again, and I put this before in a video, name one government restriction of policy that's gonna prevent you from achieving today. Name one. For that matter, name one rich black celebrity that's been killed by the police. Name one. Go ahead. I'll wait, because I'm gonna be waiting a long time because it, it hadn't happened. See, I'm here to tell you, and I keep explaining this, and I keep getting pushback. Well, you know, well, Tone Talk said this, Vet Cardell said this, well, we cannot overcome, we cannot get money. Well, why was there someone who was born a slave who became a millionaire during one of the harshest periods of time for black people why did he get money and build wealth if racism is going to stop you? I, I, like, well, once again, I keep saying racism, it, it exists. It's bad. I've dealt with it, but it didn't stop me. You got to cut the excuses. You got to cut the crap. Because if this man who was born a slave could become a millionaire doing the harshest economic period of time for black people in the United States. You don't have no excuse. And this, this is why a lot of y'all hate me. And this is why I get all these feminine men comments because I'm telling you the truth. The reason that you're not successful isn't because of racism. It isn't because of red line. It isn't because someone systematically held you and your people back. It's because you have not made the decision to become successful. That's the reason you're not successful. You, have not made that decision. It's on you. And it's a high time you stop complaining in the comments, talking about why you delete my comments. You know what? Typically, I check the video comments the next day. I don't be deleting comments unless it's particularly whack or uses the N word. Well, you, you're deleting comments. Really? That's what you're worried about? You worried about me deleting your little whiny ass comment? Why don't you worry about getting yourself some wealth? Why don't you worry about starting yourself a business? Why aren't you worried about that? And I've talked about it and someone left one of these little weak comments when I talked about 31 people shot in Atlanta, black folks, 87 people shot in Chicago, black folks, by black folks, and why weren't there no protest? And someone was like, why should we protest that? He wasn't shot by a white cop. This is the part that kills me about the Black Lives Matter movement is the hypocrisy. A black life should matter regardless of who takes it. And people literally will burn down a city if a white cop does something to a black person while he's trying to apprehend or arrest him. But the city of Chicago can literally be on fire by black folks, killing black folks during the weekend of the 4th of July. And they're like, all right, it's all right. Where's the concern? Because see, you should be outraged anytime a black person dies. And I brought it up. This little girl here in Atlanta who was riding with her mother was killed by black violence. Where's the outrages? Where's the marching for her? See, here is the thing. Going back to the weak mental. Black folks are easily excited because if I put up a video and I do not expressly say this or that, that people get triggered. In the video I talked about when you become a dominant black man, you can marry whoever you want. I brought up the other day 
Reginald Lewis, who married an Asian woman in 1969. See, and it was it's like, well, he, he talking about marrying white women. Why y'all talking about marrying white women? Like, that's something special. He shouldn't even be talking about marrying the white women. I didn't say anything about marrying the women. I said, you as a dominant black man or put yourself in the position to marry whoever you want, whoever that may be. See, we, we've had this conversation before, but you know, with the sensitive, feminine, weak men, if I don't say that super plain and like apologize and put all these disclaimers on it, you know, y'all be like, ah, go, oh my God, he talking about marrying white women, like that's something special. I was talking about money. I was talking about power. I was talking about access. I was talking about being able to live the life that you want because you have economic freedom. And I did not even say that, but that's the first thing you thought. That's the first thing you thought. You want to know why? I'm going to tell you why secretly. That's what you want to do. But because you have embraced hood culture, ghetto culture, the dominant black culture, you can't do it because you can't socialize with those women. And you just be angry in your bowl of soup. Just be mad, be pissed off. Oh, how dare he says this? How dare he says this? But I bring to you an example of a man who was born a slave. This is historical fact. Who became a millionaire. I, you know, because go ahead and tell me there's reasons that, you know, black folks cannot achieve today. Go ahead and name out all these reasons why black folks can't achieve in 2020. Go ahead. And I'm going to keep finding these historical examples of black people achieving power, wealth, and success back then during the really harsh period in America when America was very, very unkind, downright hostile to black folks. They did it then. They did it when it was super, super hard. They did it back then. The same examples are referencing, you know, because it's 2020 and I saw someone put this thing that was happened in the 50s that happened in the 20s. And to you, my dear sir, what does that have to do with you today? And also, let's talk about the white folks, because I've been posting in the comment section about the Appalachian Mountain people, the wonderful whites of West Virginia. I, the other day, I posted some about an inbred white family. These people are so poor that the rats don't even live with them because it's so bad. The rats like, hey, I can't live up in here. Because see, there's this misconception that all white people are wealthy. They're not. Most white people are poor. The majority of them are poor. And this is something that the Arona has exposed. But see, when you do not socialize with white people, when you stay over here in your camp and the white people stay in their camp and y'all just talk about each other, but you never meet for lunch. You never sit down and talk. You never visit each other's house. You never go to each other's homes for holidays. You really have no clue to what you're talking about. You're just making assumptions. That's it, just pure assumptions. Because you don't deal with these folks on a down and dirty, intimate level. So you really don't know what's going on in the white community. I don't know how many times I've heard, well, this is what white men do for their women. This is what well-paid white men do for their women. But there is a game, I forget, it's uh, Lily's home, and it's about this, it's a game where she gets pregnant. It starts off with her reading the pregnancy test that's positive. She goes to the dude, she's telling me pregnant, he spits out his coffee. Next thing, there's an image of him on this cycle going away. He's out of Dodge. This is a current game. This is a current game. I thought white men weren't supposed to do that. White men were supposed to do this. And also, there have been some YouTube channels with interracial couples where the white man has been, uh, what is it? A busted Brad or um, 
Funky Brad, whatever they call it. Well, white man they ain't really hitting on nothing. It's really the sister who's bringing in the economics. But I mean, here on YouTube, an interracial couple that starts a channel, if they're cute and they're funny, and if their kids are, oh my God, so pretty and gorgeous, they literally blow up. That also tells you something. If white America, if America at large was so against these unions, why are these channels so popular? Why they're so popular? But I'm here to tell you, if you want to be successful, you can be successful. If you want to do the work, if you want to build something, it is in your purview, regardless if you're black, regardless if you're poor. It is something you can achieve. It is something you can accomplish. Like Alonzo Herndon, look it up, Google it, see that this man was born a slave. I don't, I don't really know that your upbringing could get any worse than that that you're born into servitude, that you're born as property. And he was able to mentally get past all of that and start forming businesses. This is what I've been telling y'all for the last 10 years. Forming a business will change your life. It will create respect, it will create opportunities, it will give you the income to do and live and do what you wanna do. I keep telling y'all, I keep telling, I keep getting pushbacks. I can't do it. I need a loan. I can't do it. I can't do it. You think Alonzo Herndon got a loan from a bank? He didn't. They were giving black folks loans back then. Yeah, he managed to put together three barber shops and a life insurance company. Let me say, there was no PPP loan. There was no EDIL loan. There was no Main Street lending loan for Alonzo Herndon. He just managed his money well and invested in himself. So cut the excuses, cut the crap, stop coming at me with all of this historical. Here, here it is, Lonzo Herndon. He was born in the 1800s. He was born a slave. He built a business. He became a millionaire. What's your excuse? So join me in practicing financial self-defense. Go below and get 30 days to 2,500. Go below, get the hustler's mindset, pimp your mind for success. And if you need help, I have consulting packages below to help you start your business. Because 2020, the year of the murder hornet, that's all you got. I know that some of you are literally going to have to hit the bricks, just like some of these people who, like D.L. Hughley, you know, he was like out here doing all this stuff, and then he got the Rona. That slowed his roll. Some of you are going to literally have to hit the bricks of destitution for you to like, hey, I need to start a business. Like Alonzo Herndon. You're going to have to hit that. You're going to have to get to that point. You're going to have to get to that level of desperation before you realize the power, the status, the come up of starting a business. So that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to check out this next video right here.